So welcome back to the Chicken K channel. Today I have with me Robin. Uh, Robin uh, was actually a, a Chicken K user himself. He introduced Chicken K in two different big companies and then he joined uh, the Chicken K tribe. Uh, so we are very glad to have Robin as a as a very experienced Chicken K expert. And today we'll talk about a Log4j. Um, there was a very important security issue here and check and K can help you to monitor if your servers are affected. But uh, Robin, what's, what's all this Log4j about anyway? Yeah, well, um, Log4j is a library that is used in Java applications um, and it provides functions or uh, functionality to create log files and to do that in a um, prettier way than basic Java does. So it enables better logging, basically, and it's used in a lot of applications on the internet. So it's basically a convenient uh, tool for programmers. I think it's open source, isn't it? Right, so yeah, exactly. So it's very widespread and yeah. the impact of this issue, uh, how yeah. big is it? Right, actually the um, issue is called Log4Shell. Um, Doesn't so sound too good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and uh, that's the main point of the vulnerability because um, if you can exploit it, you gain shell access on the server that is running affected software, um, and then you can basically run arbitrary commands there. So it's absolutely important that you not only fix it, but that you uh, make sure that it stays fixed. So if someone deploys a new database instance, a new instance of some application, that it doesn't pop up again, and CheckMK can help you here. And the community has created um, a CheckMK plugin for actively monitoring if one of your servers is affected. So this was an, a community effort uh, and yeah, I'm glad that we have such an active community and thank you all for helping us here, helping uh, together and keep things up and running. So Exactly, right. So I suggest we, we get started and see how we can deploy this plugin. Yeah, let's, take it, let's dig into the technology. Okay, so. So we head over to our exchange where you can find all the MKPs and we are just going to search for log4 and then you can see uh, different MKPs and different versions. Uh, make sure you look out for the most current version. In this case, that's this one here. Um, and you can download it here um, and install it into your CheckMK site and how we how you can do that, we already explained in another video. Yes, the, the, link. In the first season of the of the series, we have a dedicated video for working with MKPs, so check that out if you don't know it. And yeah, so we exactly. have prepared a demonstration system where the MKB is already deployed. So let's jump there. Exactly, right. I prepared everything. So let's switch over to our demo site. So now here we have uh, two hosts, um, configured a Windows and a Linux host for demonstration purposes. Um, but you want to start with installing the extension package. I al already did that as said. So now we can go ahead and create the rules we need um, w in which we tell the MKP what to do, basically. Yeah, so just, just uh, to make it clear, um, we are going to deploy a plugin for the actual agent for right. Linux and Windows servers. Yeah. And that plugin will look around uh, for these security issues. Exactly. So, so there's a scanner that was created by a different project. It's a small binary um, that's included in the MKP. Um, and there are scripts uh, that are doing some magic and in the end uh, you got a little software that is scanning for the vulnerability and the agent then is reporting back um, the results of cool. that scanner. So the basic plan is uh, create check and K agents that have that agent uh, plugin deployed. Right, exactly. Uh, and if you use the agent uh, automatic agent distribution, uh, you get the automatic update. Otherwise, you need to install the new agent on the systems that, that come in question. Right, exactly. So there are two ways to distribute that. Um, if you're using one of our enterprise versions, you can do it um, through the agent bakery. Um, and if you're using the raw edition, you have to distribute the files manually. Um, how you can do that is uh, documented on the um, site in the exchange for the MKP. So uh, all information is there. You just have to put some files on the server, a little configuration and then this working too. Okay, cool. So uh, let's have a look at the rule set where you configure this agent plugin. Right. All right. So again, we are just searching for log4. There you can find 
the rules you need. And in the first place, as said, if you're using the agent bakery, you want an agent rule here. Yeah, it's um, important not to mix it up with the service monitoring rules. We come later to that one. Exa exactly, yes. right. Um, so starting with this rule, as said, I already prepared everything, but we will just create a new rule to quickly showcase what you want to keep in mind. Um, so in the first dropdown, you basically say whether you want to deploy the um, plugin for Linux or Windows, or not at all, but we are just sticking with Windows for the moment. So I, uh, I need a separate rule for the Linux host and for the Windows host? Yes, right. Okay. Because it's different binaries, that's why it has to be distinguished. That's the reason why you already have prepared two rules. So we make, as an example, we deploy it uh, on the Linux host here? Exactly, okay, right. So we start with a search path on the Linux. Uh, we are starting with a root path. Just as an example, if you have bigger servers, you want to keep that in mind because the server, of course, will take more time to scan through the files. Yeah, so that, that's the, the files where it scans for these affected Java libraries? Right, okay. exactly. Um, yeah, as said, you want to keep in mind where you are scanning. Um, then there are two options where you can define for which vulnerabilities to scan because there are two vulnerabilities in this um, family, so to speak. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna check those two because you want them. Then there is an option to scan through zip files. So obviously you need oh, to, yes. right? But, uh, you need to extract the files prior to scanning. And oh, yeah, yeah, Java. I I've remembered Java sometimes directly uses uh, libraries from zip files, doesn't it? That might be, yeah. Th these jar files aren't that actually zip files? I think there are some kind of uh, compressed format yeah, or some so kind of packaged format. But I think this options, uh, this option, as far as I'm uh, involved, actually takes a normal zip file as you know yes. it and looks into the yeah, zip yeah. file if there are any jar files. Yeah, as said, you mm -hmm. want to keep okay. that in mind okay. because it will take a lot of more time. Um, then there's an option um, that e actually enables you to fix the files that are found. So if there is a vulnerable file um, that the scanner detects, um, then there's a possibility to patch that file to mitigate the vulnerability. I see. Do, do you think that's a good idea to actually have a monitoring system fiddle around in your, in your I'm not quite sure. Systems. I mean, I've, I've seen some people talking about it. So some like the idea that their monitoring system in one run actually fixes the situation. Yes. So the check will show you that there are vulnerable files and on the next check interval, uh, it will say everything is fine again. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know really how I feel about it because from my point of view, a monitoring system should monitor and just tell you what is going on and there should be um, dedicated action to fix the situation. Good point. To be honest. But you can do it if you like. So Exactly. The option is there. <laughs> um, so then you can exclude paths. So as I said, if you're using the root directory, there's possibly yes. a lot of data. Um, so you can exclude paths here. Maybe you are quite sure that in your temp directory there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, j just, an, just an idea. Um, you want to make sure you cover everything that could be holding um, vulnerable files, but it's it's just an option right yeah, here. Okay. Um, I mean, if you know where your application paths are, you can tailor it down very, very strictly so that it's, exactly. it's getting faster. But yeah. then, but you, you could miss sure something. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So there's one more exclude option I want to point out. It's uh, by file system type. So. Um, there might be a lot of servers that are using some kind of remote file system. Yeah. Talking about NFS, for example, they can be even bigger than the server itself. NFS shares can be huge, terabytes or more. Um, so you can just exclude them here. So the, the exact spelling of this file system type is the same as in proc mounts, isn't it? Exactly. Okay, so right. There, there if you want to look that look. up. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, then you can choose to ignore Zimlinks. Um, I mean, there's an online help for every one of these options, so... Exactly right. It's quite well documented on the creators page um, where you can find all the information. Um, yeah, that's th it's it's outlined there yeah. in a much uh, in, in a on greater scale. Yeah. It's 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 a better outline. So the, the the scan interval is set to to 600 seconds or 10 minutes uh, per default. Do you think it's a good setting? Um, that depends on the landscape you're monitoring, I think, because if you have a few servers, um, 
you maybe want to scan more often because you can afford it. But if you have a huge infrastructure with a lot of servers and all the servers run the scanner at a regular interval that puts a lot of load on the platform that you're running on. Yeah. So you might want to take that into consideration how often you are scanning. Um, I think in the first place it depends on um, how often your environment changes. If yes, you have a really yes, okay, static that environment. Makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So if I'm if I'm finished, uh, what? So I need uh, actually the conditions to match just the Linux host here, or right? The Linux servers that run applications. Exactly. Um, in this case, I know that the there are only two servers. I'm just using the one for Linux here, and that's basically it. But it wouldn't that be a good application for for using host labels, automatic host labels for the operating system? Right, definitely, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a whole other topic um, <laughs> that yeah, you okay. should <laughs> already have implemented in CheckMK. But sure, yes, in this uh, example, it should be uh, um, it, it should be something okay. that you can do with host labels. So basically, I need tags. to have this rule match all servers that are running Linux right. that potentially have Java applications on it. Java applications. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, good, perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to click on save. Now we have three rules. Okay, so the you do the same thing for Windows. Uh, if you have Windows uh, servers, exactly. then it's you bake your agents new. Yeah. And then you deploy the agent and that's it. That's basically it. So then you only have to do a service discovery on the host. As usual. And how does the service look like? So if everything is deployed, how does it look like? Yeah, I'm just going to navigate quickly to our Linux example host. That is not looking good, but here we have the check. Let me just quickly skip over the not so good looking checks. And now we have the um, log for shell check. It's using the CVE okay. number, so you can find it properly, but there's also log for J in the name. Um, and here you get the state. It's okay. We do not have any vulnerable files and you get a lot of additional information, how the scan was, done. Um, okay, so here it's scanned 128,000 files in 23 seconds. Right, which exactly. Seems quite okay. Yeah, the performance is quite good of that scanner. Yeah. So that's basically this. This is the, the basic settings you have. And then, of course, you can tweak the settings. Um, yeah, of course. I think yep. the default is if, it, if there are any files found, then you will get a critical alert. Um, but you can tweak that. Well, one, one final question. Uh, I see a file is potentially vulnerable. What does that mean? Um, that is something uh, where the scanner can say for sure if the file is vulnerable or not. I'm not sure what the conditions are exactly. Yeah, okay. We'd have to look that up. Um, but it's it's making sure that even if it can't tell um, with absolute certainty that uh, yeah. the file is affected, it will at least warn the user about it and tell and you, you need that to you check have out yourself. Then. Right. Okay. Exactly. So looks good. I think that's that's everything about it. That's all to it. So thanks, Robin, for today, for this video. Was a pleasure. For your time. Thank you for having and me. See you next time. Take care. <laughs>